I love champagne cocktails and I love sparkling wine. And what I wanted to do is see if I could find some kind of way of merging the Aperol spritz with a mimosa. So an Aperol spritz is very simple. It's just Aperol, some kind of uh, sparkling water, and then white wine. And then a mimosa typically is usually half sparkling wine or champagne and orange juice. And one of my favorite citruses and oranges is blood orange. So we happen to have this. But you could use grapefruit. You can use regular orange. They all work great. Just blood orange is fantastic. And this is a really, really simple thing, and that's what I love. I love things that can be simple and can be done really quickly. And I'm gonna, and this is, this is something that you just build right in the flute. So you can get a champagne flute, you can get a, I'm using a little bit wider of a little kind of wine goblet-y thing. I'm gonna, you'll, it will make sense when you see it. And I am gonna use Capoletti instead of Aperol. So Aperol is, they're both Amaros, that means bitter in Italian. They're both made with all different kinds of bitter roots and orange peels and citrus peels and some with rhubarb. Capoletti is a wine-based Amaro and Aperol is a Nutri-Grain Spirit Amaro. They both have a very similar profile. They're definitely a little bit more sweet and less bitter than Campari, but they work really great with this. So, we're going to build this in the thing. I love using like a little sparkling wine thing so we don't have to use too much just in case we're only having a couple of them. And what I typically do is the real recipe for me that seems to work great is you're doing three ounces of a sparkling wine, three quarters of an ounce of Capoletti, and then one ounce of your blood orange, your orange juice, or your grapefruit. But what you can do easily is you can eye this. So what you'll do is you'll pour in, I usually go about halfway. So if I can get it where I feel the sparkling wine or champagne goes halfway, and then I'll put in three quarters of an ounce of the Capoletti. And again, if you cannot find Capoletti, Aperol is gonna work great. And what I also found with this is, it's really important when you're building this that you put the Capoletti right after the sparkling wine. So for some reason when you put the juice and then the Capoletti, it starts to fizz over. So this is the easiest way and, um, that it won't do that. And then I'm going to put one ounce of the blood orange. And instead of just like pouring it in there um, and letting it settle, I just, I just take a spoon and I just lightly kind of mix it up. I just want to make sure all the flavors are mixed. Without losing the bubbles, we'll just get that mixed up nicely. And listen, it's a beautiful color but it would be nice to have something to go with it and because it's typically gonna be for brunch is perfect for this or on the weekends, in the morning, in the afternoon, I like to serve something with it. And I'm gonna make a cracker um, out of these dehydrated grapefruit slices. So this is actually something I bought from one of my favorite farms called Windrose. And what they did is they dehydrated a grapefruit slice and they actually smoked it as well. So we don't have a smoker, I'm not gonna show you that, but you can get blood oranges, you can get or regular oranges really are great because they actually are super sweet, so they go really well with everything. Um, but I have a video actually on how to dehydrate citrus, which is really simple, really inexpensive, and we're going to use this to show that. But you could, you could use anything. You could use your favorite cracker, a nice piece of bread. What we're going to do is we're going to take this um, grapefruit slice, and I'm going to put some goat cheese on it. Let's grab a knife here. And listen, I love goat cheese, but you could use brie, you could use cream cheese if you wanted to, you could put salmon on top of the, the cream cheese. What's great about this though is it's really important for me if you leave the cheese out a little bit so that it starts to soften, because that makes it really, really nice. So we'll put that on there. And it just, oh, it just goes on really beautifully. So I don't want to do too much, but just enough. So I'm going to place this right on top. Now listen, you could put salmon on that. You could put a great jam. If you have like a fig jam would be really great or any kind of marmalade. I'm going to actually put some um, sage flowers on top. I've got some flowering purple sage here. And the whole idea of this is you present it like this, you take a bite of it, then you have a sip. And if you can, the colder that you can make the sparkling wine, 
the colder that you can make the blood orange juice before you serve it, the better it is. Because we're not going to put ice in it like an Aperol spritz. An Aperol spritz usually is served in a goblet with ice. So you just want to keep it as cold as possible. So let's take a bite. This dehydrated citrus is just a perfect cracker for cheese and anything. It's really good. Mm. I'm going to take a sip of this. Mm. It's so light. It's so refreshing. It's got that little touch of bitterness. That's what is great about the, the Capoletti and, and um, Aperol is it adds that one more layer to your drink. So you, you're tasting the sparkling. You've got the juiciness of the the blood orange, but that's got that little touch of bitterness that just wants you to have more and more and more. Mm. So I call this the never let me go. So the most important thing is to, to really make this your own, right? If you don't have citrus peels, if you don't have goat cheese, you know, find a nice cracker for that. Get a nice piece of bread, a fresh baguette that you cut and you put different meats on it or salmon or the cheese that you love and just place that there. I, I guarantee you, if you handed that to somebody, they're gonna be wowed by that and they're gonna be excited about it. Mm -hmm.